Hi, I'm Alan Bresnik from Light Reading. We're here in New Orleans at SCT Cable Tech Expo, and I'm speaking to Peter Wolf from Casa Systems. Hi, Peter. Hi, Alan. Uh, Thanks for stopping by our booth today. Sure. We want to find out what the latest things that Casa Systems are working on. Sure. So, um, Alan, we have a number of demonstrations here at our booth, and one of the things uh, that I'd like to start with is the fact that we've brought our new remote OLT product here. Okay. And I think that gives cable operators some unique advantages in terms of being able to handle uh, rural and urban type architectures and deliver a, uh, a 10 gig EPON type solution. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it allows operators to uh, go much longer distance than they used to. They used to only have roughly a 20 kilometer type link distance limitation. Right. Now with the remote OLT, you can go 80 kilometers and deliver 10 gig fiber to the home type services. And with this product, um, operators can plug in uh, remote OLT optics uh, on a pay-as-you-grow basis, so they don't have to deploy a full product uh, that way, and I think it'll be very effective for, for our customers. Okay, so the, I take it that this fits into the whole 10G push by cable? It does, great question. So we see that as, as very important for cable operators. Cable operators don't just do coax, we know that that's an important part of what they do, right. but they also deliver services to MDUs, to businesses, and in many cases, uh, the greenfield uh, uh, applications are where our cable operators are looking to do uh, fiber to the home. Okay, so we're going to start seeing more fiber-based products from uh, CASA? I, I think we are, Alan. We have both um, today, we have a, a chassis-based uh, 10 gig EPON card that fits into our CMTS, so right. customers that have our chassis and have uh, spare slots can use an OLT card that goes in there and deliver mm -hmm. services that way, or they can have a remote OLT product and, and deliver services out in the distributed uh, type network application. Okay, let me shift gears a little bit. You were part of our network virtualization breakfast today. Thanks. I was. So. What's your sense of where cable stands with virtualization, virtualizing its networks and where it's going to be going over the next year? So we see a lot of interest in cable operators in, in virtualization in general. Um, CAS has taken a more unique position in that we virtualize multiple functions across um, uh, applications for our networks. For example, we've virtualized the CMTS, we have a virtualized broadband network gateway, and other mobile products. Right. But I think what's what's key here, and what we've been consistent is, is we have a control plane and a data plane separation for those products to allow our customers to uniquely scale in a, in a distributed or a central, centralized type architecture. Mm -hmm. So that whether it's a, a virtual BNG or whether it's a CMTS, they can deliver compute resources closer to the edge and scale as uh, as they deploy, as they densify deploying either DAA nodes or, or other types of access devices. Okay. Are you getting the sense that cable's finally getting serious about virtualized? We are. We're seeing we're seeing more and more operators uh, in in RFPs and things like that actually ask us for for both uh, uh, CMTS based chassis based systems mm -hmm. as well as virtual offerings and and they want to do those trade offs and they want to look at that technology as well. Okay. Where do you think we'll be a year from now? I think we're going to see some virtualized deployments. Okay. You know, I think we're going to potentially get to that to that level with it. Okay. Well, we look forward to hearing about it in Denver next year. Sounds good. Thanks for your time, Peter. Thank you.